moving on, we have a little update regarding my man Brian Callan and Jen Curtin. So I'm sure you're all aware at the moment. Callan's going through. He's going through it, right? He's going through a real big. He's got a big issue to kind of deal with. He's fighting these sexual assault allegations. His career's been derailed. He's not on his podcast. You know, Joe Rogan doesn't mention him anymore. He can't do stand up. It's all. It's all gone Pete Tong. And then off the back of that, this lady called Jen Jen Kirkman is also a comedian who has a special on Netflix now at the moment. You should go check it out. It's pretty funny to be honest. She's decided to make her mission to basically hold him accountable for the crimes that she thinks that he has basically committed. At the moment, they're still alleged. No, he hasn't been you know uh, judged in a court of law and that sort of malarkey. But I guess if you're Jen Kirkman and you're a female comedian that maybe comes from the old scene or whatever it may be, she probably has some genuine um, grievances uh, to bear and maybe Callan represents everything that she hates about the comedy scene at the moment. So he might just be a unfortunate uh, victim of consequence, right? It probably isn't personal. It's probably just a thing of like, hey, she's had enough of, you know, all these men, the patriarchy, taking her shots, taking her positions, you know, effing over her friends and whatever it may be, or trashing her scene, whatever it is, right? She generally is, she generally, it feels like she generally has a axe to grind with the whole uh, comedy scene in general. And unfortunately, Callan is a sacrificial lamb. So, of course, I've not been a fan of his approach. I think he's not really dealt with it the right way. He's not really resolved it in the right way. Of course, I know some people have mentioned in the comments oh how is he gonna f um clear his name allegations are more than 20 years old yeah i get it but there's a way to carry yourself there's a way to kind of handle it in public that would maybe um grant you some sort of sympathy that would maybe allow you to be more emotionally sensitive and aware of what's going on to a little bit of tact i don't know what it is but I don't think, you know, setting up a Patreon podcast, talking about conspiracy is another one where you kind of badger on about societal issues whilst you've got these allegations hanging over your head and then deciding to announce a bloody nationwide tour is the right way to go about things. So far, from my experience or from what I know, from what I've seen, I don't think there's been a single person who's been quote unquote cancelled, especially no, not cancelled, who's had these serious sexual assault allegations. Cancel is different. I think cancel you could deal with it that way. I think if you have sexual assault allegations, I don't think there's anyone, right, that's been me too, that's kind of gone about it the way that he has, Callan, and and won. Yeah, I don't think it exists. I think maybe the the kind of the closest example might be Jeremy Piven when he was accused of some, you know, some sexual whatever misgivings that he'd done to somebody and essentially his whole what i think he had a series a tv show about selfridges or something that he essentially got i think something got canned but he wasn't able to go to the premiere and some other shows i'm pretty sure in the background that he probably got scrapped off of and then he suddenly turned into a stand-up comedian right but his own job that he actually does i think that he excels at in terms of acting he wasn't able to do and he hasn't able to be able to do since right and he tried to kind of you know he kind of went on the front foot um made a tweet put out some you know some uh press releases and basically category denied the allegations but he still did it with a bit more tact than Callan did at the moment i get i get it Callan's fighting for his life you know fighting for the future of his family he wants to go back to doing what he does best but i just think there's a better way to go about doing this than just you know starting a podcast on patreon with sam tripoli ranting about conspiracy theories and then deciding to go and tour it just doesn't look right i mean it just doesn't look right and i guess some of these women especially Adrian kirkman that's what that might be one of their triggers and then of course you know um jen said what she said which i mentioned in the other podcast about her kind of ranting about you know uh men wanting to be allies but then doing what they're doing now and basically not holding um people like Callan accountable or the clubs accountable and i guess Callan saw that tweet and that message from her and decided enough is enough and decided to publicly um comment right and publicly kind of replied to jen kirkman and basically say hey what's the deal what's your problem and i don't have an issue with this i just think again he's for somebody that kind of, because this is the issue, if you listen to, to T5K, you'd know Callan hates all this stuff, right? He, he hates um, social justice warriors. Um, he kind of has a, a axe to grind with, you know, some women coming out and making allegations about a certain person 20 years after. He has some very questionable opinions when it comes to sort of stuff, but he should be more than aware that um, people that like this, that come after you at this sort of fashion, they don't want to sit down with you. They don't want to have a conversation. They just want to end your career and again maybe jen kirkman isn't doing that and she can say no i'm not actually doing that. i want to hold him accountable but for what i've seen from these people especially you know they have a general they have a, a an actual grievance right they generally think that men 
in the industry that they're in have for for a long period of time have you know uh been running amok doing exactly what they want and now is the time to hold them accountable and if they're and if they have an opportunity to do so they're not going to let go until you are done and i think the only way i've seen it work um and if I can't think of somebody that's worked in their favor where they've been able to turn it around, it ha- doesn't happen. So Brian Callan did try to reach out across the aisle and have some sort of civil discourse and Jen Copeman completely shut him down. But he said, hey, Jen Copeman, why don't you come to my podcast and we can actually <laughs> meet and talk? I'd love to discuss why you are so passionately invested in destroying the life of somebody you don't know based on solely on hearsay. That's a real offer. And again, let's look at it honestly, right? Nothing good will come out of them sitting down together and having a conversation because... You know, you can't trust Brian Callan to, number one, be um, civil enough to have that kind of conversation because essentially his livelihood's at risk. Um, he feels like he's been personally attacked. I'm sure of it. Um, there's no way you can have a conversation um, with, in such a heat, in such a hot button topic, right? And have it to be any way civil. It's always going to turn into a shouting match. And again, once it turns into a shouting match, he immediately loses, right? It is what it is. And then Jen Kirkman's side of things, she doesn't need to sit down with him, right? Essentially, she's exercising her own freedom of speech. If if Brian Callan feels it okay to go out there and tell people that, hey, I'm going to put on a show, she should be, she's within her right, even though I don't agree with how she's going about it, to essentially go out and say, hey, why are these clubs booking him if he's got these allegations over his head? They're both, they both can do what they need to do, right? The issue here, I guess, is that unfortunately, we're in a position where there is no way it looks like at the present moment for either party to move on. It just doesn't, I don't see how it can happen. Callan can't essentially prove that he's innocent. Um, the women that have been maybe um, victims of this crime can't essentially prove it happened really categorically in a court of law. Um, and then a person like Jen Kirkman who thinks um, Brian Callan represents everything she hates about the comedy scene can't really make any kind of long-term gain or change in the industry because unfortunately no one cares. That's the actual sad bit about everything, right? Because even if, let's imagine Callan did what um, he's accused of, right? And he is a rapist and he is a sexual abuser, whatever. Let's let's imagine this is true. What's actually going to happen? He's not going to go to prison. He's not going to lose his career. He won't disappear from the limelight. He'll still be around. You'll still see him at comedy clubs. You'll still be attending the circuit, doing what he does, maybe in a reduced capacity, but he'll still be around. And whatever lack of opportunity Jen Kirkman thinks she does have, it'll continue happening because what will happen in Hollywood, because Hollywood's annoying like that, they'll just look at all these tweets and all this kind of public, you know, spats that she's having with comedians. They just make it, they'll just kind of make the conclusion that she's difficult and hard to deal with and they'll just completely distance themselves from her. So this is going to serve, that's a sad thing about it. It benefits absolutely no one. The victims lose, Brian Callan loses, Jen Kirkman loses, the comedy scene loses at large. And of course, us fans, we lose because we don't get the ability to see, you know, Callan back on the podcast or Jen Kirkman doing what she does best, you know, without having all this stuff in the back of her mind. It really is stressful. And then to further carry on with this and, you know, to make this even more ridiculous, Ken decided to get on Instagram and give out a message to his fans, let them know that he is trying his best to get back on the podcast or whatever it may be. And again, ill advised, why is he doing this? I don't know. Um, who is he responding to? Who is he even talking to when he makes his messages? Like, you have these serious allegations over your head. The future of your family is at stake. Your reputation has been, you know, decimated in public you should be doing all you can to prove your innocence or whatever it may be or just you know to bring these women to the table so you can discuss something whatever i don't know what the solution is this is not my job to find out to give you ideas right or to give anybody ideas i'm just saying do people honestly think this is the right way to go about dealing with this do you honestly think this is the right way to address it do you honestly think this is the best way to um not even honor the victims but to um uh acknowledge and understand what's going on is it really the best way to go about doing it i probably don't think not but hey what do i know let's play the clip uh brian cullen addressing the t5k fans hey guys um this is for my fighter and the kid fans um i know you guys are wondering where i've been why i'm not on a podcast believe me i want to be back on the podcast i plan on being back on the podcast brendan wants me back on the podcast but right now, our professional relationships just will not allow it. And it's. And that's funny, right? Professional relationships won't allow it. That's the irony of their situation. There was a period in time in T5K history and T5K law when they were kind of, you know, when the common thing, when, the, um, when they went through what they were going through with Fox, they had a bit of a falling out because kind of, I think Brian, Brendan said something, I don't know. And they essentially had to uh, part ways. And part of the 
victory speech was oh we get to do our thing on our own we're independent we don't have a higher ups all they gave us was a studio and evan the beard now we get to do it on our own but quite quickly because they wanted to secure the bag and because they weren't willing to you know do the hard work and grunt they decided to sign up with i guess cast media who are their essentially employers um or their bosses in that respect and now cast media are basically um preventing brian callum from appearing on his own show that they built with their own two hands and again they can on i can say even as a fan that yes fox did help them but these guys built that podcast on the ground up themselves they essentially um were the reason why you have all these podcasts up at the moment now with like a comedian and a fighter right they basically started that trend and now they're in a position where they are essentially working for the equivalent of a cbs right they're essentially working for the equivalent of a HBO where they basically told who they can have on. They're basically, they probably, I'm assuming cast media gives them suggestions on guests. They help them to put the show out, maybe to get producers, maybe to, you know, increase their reach, uh, sponsors, marketing, all that good stuff. But then on the backside of it, once they get in trouble, the same platform that they have to talk to their fans, they can't utilize it to galvanize their, their, their fan base or to defend themselves they can't use it so instead he has to run away to you know behind a paywall on patreon and you know speak on it there where no one really is paying attention or where no one really cares or essentially just lose your career off the back of the one deal that you're making it's really really funny that that happened that way and again so unfortunate sucks um but um trust me i'm i'm doing everything i can uh i'm, I'm still doing the patreon thing what can you do? There's nothing you can do. If Carl says no, it's no. What honestly can he do to change the fact that you can't go back on your show? And again, how's this is the problem as well for it. Even though, you know, I think the recent show they did with Malik and um, Chappelle, yeah, that was really good. But for the most part, the co-hosts have been a bit meh, you know. The beauty of T-Fat Cave, like it or lump it, is Brendan Shaw and Brian Callan without, you know, Callan on there. It's, a, it's not what it was. You're not really getting the full product. So... To be in this position now where you can't go back on your show, you can't go defend yourself, you have to go on the road to make to make the bucks and do what you have to do, but then that's also um, exposing you and making you a target for people to, you know, uh, regurgitate some of these stories and allegations. It's just, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Thing, but I plan on being back. In the meantime, I'm going to be on the road this month. I'll be in India. I'll see you in India. I'll see you in Columbus. I'll see you in Kansas City. I'll see you in Dallas. I'll see you in Orlando. Um and uh so thank you thank you so much for sticking with me here uh but there's just stuff i gotta take care of and i will take care of it yeah you gotta take care of the bills and again i just think it's ill time he should have never announced he should have never announce the dates in public if he was gonna go and do a tour he should have just put the dates out he just should have let the clubs put the dates out there and kept it moving but obviously he needs to sell tickets because he's not a big enough name to just have a date go up and if it's to sell out you know, he's, that doesn't, that isn't the case, unfortunately, for him, especially during this time where he's been out of the limelight. I'm sure some, or even just with the allegations, I'm sure some genuine fans have basically fallen out of love with his comedy or wanting to see him. So you've lost a, a, probably a big portion of your fan base due to the allegations alone. And then on top of that, people just, you know, the attention span goes somewhere else once you're kind of not in front of their face anymore. So you kind of have to promote it. You kind of have to put it out on your socials that you perform. But then the moment you put it out on your on your socials, people like Jen Kirkman and her friends so see and like, what? How dare you? Right? And then they start calling up the clubs, deciding to, you know, basically questioning why they're booking you and essentially trying to cancel you in real time, even though, you know, Jen says she's not canceling him. That is what cancellation is. And then talking about cancellation, another development of it to end it quickly is um, Callan is now suing not the accusers of said allegations, the people that are basically women that have kind of come out and detailed some of the experiences they've had with Brian Callan allegedly. She's instead suing the husband of one of the accusers because i guess this guy went out of his way to call each comedy club that he's meant to be performing at and basically question the managers as to why they decided to book him at their club which is again you can understand it if he truly believes um his wife um account of what happened you can understand the rage you would feel as a partner to do all you can to destroy whoever did whatever he is accused of doing to his wife but god almighty again this is just brian's own doing it's his own doing if he would have dealt if he would have addressed and tried to resolve the issue it with some kind of level of um, humility with some kind of level of maturity this wouldn't have happened but instead he thought he was above it he thought he could somehow skirt around it um I don't know, he thought a statement or two, a strongly worded tweet would basically um, 
you know, uh, convince all the attack dogs to, to, you know, to back off. And that's not how it happens, honestly. And he should know this more than anyone. He's one of the people that kind of keeps raging on about the, the perils of council culture, you know, and he has no idea of how to kind of address it in the right way. But again, we continue. There's an article from TMZ. It says comedian Brian Callan claims his rape accuser's husband is waging a war to destroy his livelihood as an actor and a stand up comedian for intimidation. So he claims a new lawsuit. I shouldn't be laughing, but God almighty, man, what a what a way to end it, right? What a way to end the year for these guys. They have a successful podcast, his business is flipping booming, then suddenly COVID hits. No, what is it? Well, Callan, well, how's it go? Um, divorce from your child's mother again, you know, maybe, you know, time things change, you know, people uh split up and they move in separate directions you split up you decide to get your lids redone because you're you know self-conscious and you want to prolong your hollywood career you suddenly get a spot in a really big movie but then you get one and a half seconds you know people seeing your back in the joker you secure your own what spin-off show right you're suddenly you're, you're, you're suddenly starting to get some momentum in the industry uh, everything's going where it's going and then COVID hits and suddenly you and your co-host turn into COVID deniers. You turn you turn off your entire fan base. Um everyone's now wishing death on you when you get the when you get the virus and now you're in a situation where um these past flings or encounters that you had with women twenty years ago have now turned out to not be what you remember them to be. God almighty what a way to end the year um callan best known for his role in the hangover and goldbergs is suing gabriel tigerman the husband of Catherine fior tigerman who recently publicly accused callan of raping her back in 1999 callan claims uh since the accusations came to light gabriel has been on the war path to destroy his career through threats and harassment and intimidation now i guess obviously the gabriel guy i understand your anger but you can't be going up you know and calling these bloody clubs yourself you know giving your name your dl's and questioning your public that's that's just too much isn't it even if you think the person's guilty it should just go through the court of law but again if this guy kind of would have treated these allegations with any kind of um humility i'm sure this wouldn't have ended up this way but you know when you try and when you try and think you're above it you could just move on and carry on a career without you know uh addressing these things head on this is what basically happens it continues here it says according to legal documents obtained by tmz callan claims gabriel uh contacted his reps at talent agency caa and asked whether they're still representing callan in light of the allegations but <laughs> this is mad absolutely maddening suggesting doing so would send a message to the victims that this behavior is okay callan says the email went on to say do you um why did it say call when it's not happening they said claims oh contact sorry contacted they said um callan said the email went on to say do you and caa still represent this sexual assault predator i hope the answer is no and that's essentially what this is what i mean with jen which I have a bit of a bug to bear. She says she's not trying to cancel the guy, but this is essentially what cancel culture is. Even what she's doing on Twitter now with her thread of contacting all the clubs and adding them and stuff. That's what cancel culture is, right? That's essentially a quintessential cancel culture. Again, does he deserve it? Who knows? Whatever. If you believe the allegations, you probably say yes, whatever. That, but the fact of the matter is that is quintessentially what cancel culture is. Contacting, you know, his places of employment, contacting place brands and corporations that are linked to him in an order to basically bring him down, stop his way of making income as a kind of retribution for the acts of the crimes that you think he's guilty of committing um anyway continues here article it says um what's more callan claims gabriel went as far as contacting comedy clubs attempted to get them to drop him he claims some comedy clubs have cut ties with him after gabriel reached out to them callan was vehemently denied Catherine's claims and claims gabriel's efforts are seriously damaged his career he's suing gabriel for unspecified damages and this is a funny thing as well right most comedy clubs will probably be okay with having him at their show. I just think they just don't want the hassle. When people call up and start to cancel and say, we're going to threaten you with this and that, call him bomb threats and all this malarkey, threaten to go and pick it outside the show and protest and run on stage and bloody blah, blah, blah. Comedy shows, just comedy clubs just don't want that hassle, right? They're already suffering as it is. The last thing they need is bad press in the media and then to have people turn up, to have the local community turn on them. They don't want that. But it does go to show that there is an op that there is a, a an ability, there is an option, or there is a route for you to go and earn some money on the road, even with these allegations above your head. But you have to deal with them beforehand. You can't just go. You can't just be accused of what you're accused of. You know, put out a strongly worded tweet and then decide to just kind of carry on. That's not what happens, right? Like you don't just like stick over what what they put over the kid. They put the rinks over the kid and just decide to put on the show. Like just everything that they've done post these allegations has been horrendous. And just imagine what would have where we would be right now or where Canon would be right now if Brendan Shaw was allowed to just 
go off as he says on the topic imagine if he was able to comment on this the way he wants to he would have he would have made this 10 times worse right he would have said something about the woman's looks or something like you know what he would have said he would have said some mad thing that would have made it even worse than what it is now at the moment so um yeah i don't know what the solution is i don't know how this is going to work out i don't know how it's going to pan out i'm pretty sure that again as i mentioned in the beginning no one really wins in this the victims of said crime are going to be um you know trolled and persecuted online via some of the calendars more ardent fans canon doesn't win his family doesn't win jen doesn't win the husband doesn't win no one wins because essentially no one wants to deal with it's like an adult no one wants to sit down talk about what's happened kind of come to some sort of resolution people just want to what cancel somebody like what what do you want me to do like walk into the middle of a highway like jump off a bridge like what is the solution here at the end of the day and again if he's guilty of this stuff like i don't know what it, what happens in a court of law do you do you sue him do you go and give a police statement i don't know what happens but there needs to be some idea in terms of how we get from this point to some point of resolution because at the moment how it's playing out now in public is just it's making everyone look terrible it's making everyone look terrible but again i think most of the blame in my opinion again just from my point of view i said definitely lays at the fear of Callan. even if the allegations are not true you can't just deal with them the way he's dealt with them right just decide to get back on your show i'm going to talk on there openly about it it's just come on do like give these give these allegations the level of respect they needed uh, internal investigation whatever it may be hire a private investigator do something to make these to make um to kind of uh, um to save your career to basically you know get this smart off your name do something do something but instead here's here's what we have but again let me know your thoughts on down below what do you think the solution is do you think jen will stop um do you think the husband of um the rape victim is is well within his rights to be trying to cancel him in terms of his comedy gigs do you think Callum's going about the right way should he be going on tour let me know what you think down below in the comments i'd love to know your thoughts and opinions <laughs>